demonstrations and processions these are usually done by the parties in the opposition now when i talk about these parties in the oppositions they can resort to demonstrations they can de uh, resort to procession and dharna and road blockade those are the ways in a democracy of showing or raising a voice against a certain policy matter now there are can be similar activities for lodging protest when i when we say that there has to be protest which is being lodged what is also important is the way we are making use of plaques the banners or raising slogans even at times burning effigies and the posters and black flags so the, these are various means and modes of uh, raising a protest in a democracy when we say that it is also important to understand why should somebody be uh, you know coming up with all those modes because in a democracy you are at all times needing some kind of support from the people and when you you see people coming together on an issue to raise their voice against a certain uh, matter it is important that these demonstrations or processions and the tools of these demonstrations while raising these slogans and supporting particular faces particular uh, issues of the policy matter what becomes important is the way you are raising this protest while you're making it violent or you making it completely non violent there can be silent protests as well like when i uh, talk about that there are countries like japan where all they do is wear a black flag on their collars and with that everything proceeds accordingly the entire work system does not fall apart the way we see it in uh, our democracy the indian democracy so whenever people raise protest against a certain issue they would either shut down the roads or they would ask the entire city markets to be shut down depending upon the magnitude you know of the uh, of the protest but there can be very non violent and silent kind of protests as well the other thing is that the political parties call for strike or band like say for example bharat band or they call for road blockade and other activities and they sometimes turn ugly and violent now this may invite police action now there are two things to be kept in mind one is that already the mob is getting violent or the people are resorting to ways and means which are hurting or harming property and people in general so police can take the resort of lathi charge or shelling of tear gas or even firing at times and sometimes it is the other way around the police may obstruct the demonstration and in reaction the protesters can turn violent so this could lead to stone pelting and effigy burning sometime till sometime back this was a very regular feature in jammu and kashmir and silent protests are also a way i've already spoken about how silent protests can be a way of registering your protest and at the same time not harming the economy or the public property or people in general we are talking about how police may obstruct i will give you an example from newspaper now there's this story which says residents clash with cops in faridabad village facing demolition So 1400 families on voter list can be rehabilitated says the chief minister of the state a clash broke out between police and residents of Faridabad Khodi village who had gathered for a maha panchayat against the demolition of their houses as ordered by the supreme court the apex court has directed that around 10000 houses will have to be demolished in the village which have been built illegally on aravalli forest land so there was a heavy police contingent that was deployed around the park and the prohibitory orders were already issued under section 144 cpc and that was imposed in the area so this is what happens when people are protesting or demonstrating against a certain thing or raising a voice against uh, an order by the government or the supreme court this kind of a clash can happen then the next thing um, next source of news for a political reporter can be press conferences and press briefings now press conferences and press briefings are two different things when we say press conference it is a more important kind of an event which is happening because the political party is has something very important and newsy and urgent and timely to tell you you as in the media reporter the political reporter and as opposed to this the briefings happen every day 
at a certain point of time so say for example the noon or the evening time so and they happen at the national headquarters now this is basically done to update the media about um, their point of view on certain issues and it is used to level charges on the opponents they also are done to refute charges you know when there there can be the opposition which can be a uh, blaming the government or it can be the government which is blaming the opposition so even to refute charges the, either the opposition party or the gov- the party in the government can uh, make use of press briefings and press conferences now press briefings like i said they are done daily and the official spokesman usually addresses the press briefings at times when there is something important something that the people should know and uh, people like to see their leaders talking about it it is such an important issue those times we would also see some senior leaders taking the place occupying that space um and making the press briefings the political reporters attend all such meetings press conferences like i said when the party has something important to share some views some opinion on an important uh, development which is latest recent and has some national level implications a press conference can be called and unrise like uh, press briefings the time date and venue is well in advance notified to the media so that the media can be there and then there is the spokesperson or a national level leader who's addressing the conference and then the uh, media people ask questions party meetings or conventions now when i talk about party meetings all meetings are not open to the media all meetings are not open to the public there are certain closed door meetings and when we talk about closed door meetings they can be senior leaders of the party and executive or working committee of the party so these closed door meetings are held only between the um executive officials of the party and it is difficult for political reporters you know to cover unless officially communicated on the outcome of the meeting it because then you're holding a closed door meeting it is very difficult that a reporter a political reporter should be able to get an access to what the discussion has been but sometimes a reporter can get details from a confidential source now this confidential source can be a dissenting leader so say for example a political party has taken the stand that now that we are in government let us uh, make sure that all the the girl child of the country gets educated and they get educated for free there can be one dissenting leader who might think that this will lead to uh, maybe this will not help the gdp at all and it will because education is a big sector economically speaking as well so maybe they think they are dissenting leaders so they can be a confidential source for somebody in the media and they would let the information out press meetings and conventions also become a source alternately if you do not really have a source that you've cultivated within a party the best way is to wait for an official statement and to understand what the you know the outcome of this meeting has been Many political parties hold joint meetings for the formation of joint front or entering into an alliance. Now such kind of meetings also take place. They are not only taking place because of uh, some policy matter or some uh, some issue that has come up on a national level. It can also be because they are trying to align with another political party as opposed to the government the party in the government so that can be one reason why closed door meetings are held and then they also try to enter into alliance with these parties the opposition parties may also seek meetings with the president and the prime minister for submitting their representations on some viable issues so this could be the increasing number of corona cases in the country it could be the fact that the vaccines that are adopted in india are not um allowing the international com- the international community is not allowing us to have vaccinated passports because the vaccines that are there in india are not being accepted outside so uh, these can be some issues or uh, so also some other major issues can be the reasons why the political parties might seek a meeting with the prime minister or the president and give their written uh, you know um, opinion to them annual conventions and periodic conferences are also there and political reporters are given full or limited access now when we say the conventions or conferences they could be for various reasons like for a corporate organization it could be for skill building it could be for um, you know for training purposes or it could be to figure out how we can prosper better in the next 
annual year and how we can increase our business volume or sales volume similarly uh, political parties also hold their conventions and periodic conferences now it depends on the sensitivity of the issues and the kind of um, the kind of information that will be revealed during that convention that helps them decide whether to give media a full access or partial access to the event press reporters for political reporters to follow is the press release or the social media platform these days in fact in fact for the past 8 to 10 years now right from the time of arab spring we've been seeing that you know most of the protests are created on social media and these days when we research we also get to know what is the geocentric uh, uh, approximation of that place where the protest came from and then there are also research methods that would show whether the people around there were um, uh, were for the issue or against the issue now press releases provide significant input to political reporters why because these are official statements on particular issues that have been studied that have been issued by political parties and are studied by the media before they make a proper news report then political parties also use social media platform and the political reporters the people who are working on the political beat need to keep a track on such postings they need to track also their mouthpieces like everybody uh, like we had um, in mumbai we had samna and uh, which was by bala saheb thakre and then we had from bjp we have kamal sandesh we also have congress sandesh which is from congress so a political reporter also needs to keep in touch with these publications so that they can get to know what is uh, inside the mindset of such you know of a given political party and that will also help them analyze the kind of stand these political parties will take on a given issue these publications provide news material for political reporters and the next thing now that we're going to talk about is how political news gathering and writing is taking place the reporters are assigned beats for the smooth conduct of any reporting job now a beat is a subject area that a reporter would cover like it could be uh, the political beat sports beat legal beat crime beat various kinds of areas that reporters have their expertise on and which they are assigned to cover usually talking of news organizations people major in two to three beats so they there are two to three uh, specializations that they develop it can be economy it could be industry it could be uh politics it could be sports it could be any of those a beat so is a subject area that a reporter is assigned to cover and the assignment of a particular beat helps in developing the expertise when i know that i have these three areas to work in i develop my expertise in them expanding sources gaining knowledge and experience for better performance is also important because this becomes an important part of the political news gathering and writing then when we talk about the reporting network it is important to understand the network from the point of view of different medias so if i talk about the newspaper business in particular then a reporting network operates at three levels one is the city level one is the state capital and the third is the national capital now uh, city reporting which is also called local reporting or metropolitan reporting this is the reporting of the particular city or place where the newspaper office is based the headquarter is based so all the city reports would carry news from the subliminal areas from the areas which are surrounding the newspaper office the entire city and the state so city reporting is uh, limited to local reporting only this can also be slightly extended in case of metropolitan towns and cities because metropolitans have a larger area to be covered so when we say um lucknow lucknow can be a bureau office but uh, delhi the national capital is delhi ncr so you have a larger area to cover and every newspaper from whichever city it is published has a reporting setup in the state capital and the national capital as well they have these reporting setups and the reporting setup is called a bureau so because the national headquarter cannot be at every place but there are other important places like say for example there will be for any national newspaper there will be one bureau for the entire northeast the all the uh, states of the northeast so this bureau is like a smaller newspaper office they have reporters who would cover all the different sort of beats and they would uh, gather all the news and then this news will be sent to the headquarters 
Now let us talk about coverage under political beat. The news from inside the parliament, we have to understand how this is getting covered. So one is the city reporting room, one is the state bureau, and the third is national bureau. So when you're looking at any political information, say for example, if I'm talking about the elections that will be coming up in Punjab, that is the state bureau's job to cover what is happening, how people are representing themselves, how political parties are aligning on various issues which uh, need their clear opinion and when you talk about the city reporting room it could be about the various things that are affecting a particular city or a particular metropolitan and when we talk about the national bureau it will talk about essentially those policies which have a national bearing in character or a national impact the political beat is common to all these three levels. So political beat is done for a small town leader as well. It is done for a state level chief minister as well, as well as the political parties that operate on a national level. So there are a range of activities that need to be covered at all these three levels. Let us look at the city reporting room. One is the district and city level units of political parties. This can also include meetings and programs and political activities on the street. So this is the district level thing. Then we have politicians and MLAs and MPs, their activities and the statements of uh, local politicians. You know, what a particular politician has come and said about the area, how this person is going to make use of MP Lads fund, what are the, uh, the prime things on their agenda, they have to be looked after. So this includes politicians who would have been elected to the state legislature and the parliament and the statements that they're issuing on uh, matters of common uh, interest. Then there are senior leaders and ministers who would visit the city by state and national level leaders of political parties. And then there will be ministers of state or central government, at times the prime minister, the CM, the president. So that kind of uh, reporting also comes under the political beat of the city reporting. Then we talk of the state bureau. The state units of political parties and meetings and programs and other political activities either in the state capital or all across the state get covered when we're talking about the state bureau. So say for example, the chief minister of Haryana holds a function in Panchkula. So Panchkula is just one district out of all the 19 districts of Haryana. But because it is the chief minister, the state bureau would cover it and accordingly you know, you have, um, say for example, a Danik Bhaskar edition for Rajasthan, another one for Haryana and Punjab together. So it gets covered over there. State legislature is another body. Sessions of legislative assembly and council and activities of the MLAs and MLCs are important. I was just talking about the MP Lads Fund. How are the MPs spending their fund in development of which all villages uh, or which all places? That is also important to understand and it is the, the function of the State Bureau to cover the, these aspects. Then we have the state government and the functioning of the state government, chief minister, governor, and whether they get along well together and whether how do they formulate their policies. Those are the things that are looked after by the State Bureau. Another aspect that the State Bureau looks after is the central government ministers. Now there are visits of state capital by the prime minister, other ministers, as well as the president. So this is something that gets covered by the State Bureau. Now coming over to the National Bureau, and you would see while we're going from city to state to national, you would not see a lot of difference in the character of the stories. It's just that the level of reporting keeps changing. So the national units of political parties are there, which get covered by the National Bureau. This includes all the meetings and programs of other political activities, either in the national capital or all across the country. Then we also have parliament sessions of the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. This is again something that the National Bureau of any news media organization would cover. And it also covers the activities of the MPs inside or outside the parliament. Then of course we have the coverage of the central government, which is again very important because whatever they're doing has relevant implications, ramifications for the people in general. So functioning of the central government and prime minister and the president all get covered in that. Then we also have center state relations. Like you would have heard, there is a state X, which is not in the favored list of the central government. So they would either get 
less budget allocated to them or they would be something or the other uh, they would be at loggerheads when it comes to the lg and the cm so on and so forth so the issues between center and state need to be sorted particularly when it is related to governance and policy matters then there are international relations this part is also looked after by the national bureau so the national bureau will tell us how the relationship between israel and palestine or a war like situation between israel and palestine how will it affect us as a nation and what should be our stand so the okay this also includes the visits of heads we know that on republic day we usually have international guests as the guest of honor so visits of head of states or other senior leaders or our prime minister visiting other countries people coming from other foreign countries and agreements or pacts that we are signing either for trade or for defense or for economy or for promoting certain um, you know uh, skill development or other sorts of industries all of it get covered by the national bureau then of course there are international conventions and international events in india that happen which also get covered by the national bureau now these are events which will lay focus on or which will be the the building stone of the pact that we might enter in it could be solar energy it could be electric vehicles it could be you know um anything that has something to do with environment energy and all those terrorism those are the three four important concerns of the entire world so any kind of event which is happening which can become the basis of creating a policy or creating a pact with another country will get covered by the national bureau now if i talk about uh, the political news gathering and sources for political news gathering field reporting and spot coverage becomes important so when i say field reporting and spot coverage it is important that the like if we talk about the papers to be laid on the table of the house so the, those papers those answers to probable questions need to be asked and they need to know the political reporter needs to know something inside out what is the policy matter if we're talking about the farm laws if we're talking about uh, you know any particular aspect how is it affecting the people is something which is for the reporter the political reporter to research upon and interpret in a phenomenally beautiful manner in an objective manner so that people can not only understand it in their own language but also uh, you know come up with the proper solutions for that now what all does does it include it includes reporting the sessions of legislators it includes public meetings it includes speeches given by you know prominent leaders leaders of national importance it also includes demonstrations and rallies and election campaigning so these basically are the sources where you will find uh, politics and where you will find political news so this will be a very good green area for you to culminate your ideas and give wings to your ideas and i hope it was beneficial to you all thank you